So, I'm Andre, uh, and you're watching the Arizona Breakdown. Today, I am joined by Cole and Neil of the Arizona Death Metal Band, Lago. So, how are you guys doing today? How's it going? Yo. Hell, Long time no see. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited to have you guys here today. So, uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into it. So, you guys have been killing it recently. From Northwest Terrorfest to the June release of Sea of, sea of Dress, but I want to ask you guys, so in everything that you've done this year, what's been the highlight of 2018 so far for you guys as a band? Hmm. So either that Northwest Terror Fest or the CD release show, both of those are super awesome. Uh, just like the CD coming out in general, getting on uh, with the Unique Leader. Well, that happened last year, but the album actually being released. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've gotten a lot of cool positive feedback the negative feedback we got isn't that bad like you guys are like a boring immolation <laughs> yeah cool. it's cool to play oh. man <laughs> yeah more stream yeah I was gonna say I don't see how that is <laughs> yeah so I mean even that in itself is a compliment even though the person was probably trying to be a dick about it <laughs> yeah so I mean it's it's. I think it's been a good year and this guy's probably a lot more excited he's the one who started up this whole thing yeah it's uh, the same for me it's, it's kind of a toss up between uh, Northwest Terrorfest and the uh, album release show um, it's crazy it's like Northwest Terrorfest festival with like way bigger bands than we are or will ever be and like our album release show we had just as many people um, oh, yeah. the night we played Northwest Terrorfest we had just as many people there to come out and uh, see all the bands and all like that lineup so uh, yeah, that's a toss up for me, but yeah, it's been exciting. Um, like, we, we kind of crammed everything in there. We got the album finished and to the label like in February, so we were kind of worried that the time frame wouldn't line up with uh, going up to Northwest Terror Fest and having an album, but just like in the nick of time, it got, it got released. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been very cool. So, we'll see what happens going forward. Oh, yeah. Well, <coughs> So you guys have quite the impressive discography. So going from the Marietta <coughs> EP all the way up to the most recent release, um, are there any major differences between how you guys were writing back then versus how you're writing now? Yeah. Um, bro, you want to handle those Marianas? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, Neil, I think Neil was like 15. <laughs> I think, uh, I've, I've said it a couple times when people ask, but I think like Sea of Duress is, uh, obviously there's a progression with everything, but Sea of Duress is like kind of where we are, oh, this is who we are, this is this is the identity, I guess. Um, but I feel like Marianas, I was uh, still just, oh, I like Morbid Angel and Emperor. Let's yeah. just combine those two riffs. And same with Tyranny, um, even the split, that we did with Calm Hatchery, but uh, Catacombs and Oceans, uh, that was really, I think, where we kind of, the addition of Gus, where I was like, let's, let's step outside the box a little bit, because for a while, like, Lago had, uh, you know, a few lineup changes, and we'd been a band, I think, at that point, maybe five or six years, and I was just frustrated with it, because, you know, how replacing members is, it's a pain in the ass, like, it sets you back, like, six months to a year sometimes, so... Um, me and Gus are just kind of riffing, doing weirder stuff, um, not your traditional Tampa Bay sort of death metal. And I, I found this, fuck it, we'll just make Lago weird, it's my band, I can do what I want. So, um, yeah, this album is, is finally where, okay, this is, the progression has got to this point, this is what we sound like, this is our identity, so, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. So, yeah, and that actually leads into the next question. So, there have been quite a few lineup changes, which, um, honestly, I would believe have led to, well, the strongest lineup. Um, yeah, how, how do you feel like the dynamic is with this current uh, roster lineup? The, this is, uh, easily, this is the, my most favorite time I've ever been in the band. Obviously, with everything going on between you know, being on a bigger label, unique leader, um, but just as far as like being in a band where they're like guys are my friends. Yeah. Like I could, I could be drunk and text one of these guys at two in the morning, hey man, like and get a response and it's it's like a cool it's like a friend dynamic. Um, 
even when we went out on the little three day trip, whatever, but the whole time it was a good time. Like there was never any bad vibes going on. Um, even like writing stuff with Gus, I don't, I don't think there was maybe a riff or two that we might have between us. Like said, no, I don't like that. Um, and I don't think even when we finally got the stuff together to show Neil, and when he kind of had his parts for it, or when he was listening to what we were doing, I don't think there was a whole lot of, I don't like that, or stuff like that. I think it flowed pretty well once we finally started going. Like, we're slow writers, just because we're lazy. But <laughs> when, when it finally got, okay, let's write an album, like, I think it went pretty smoothly. But. Yeah, and Gus is fucking awesome. He's not here right now, obviously, but he's, he's a fucking super rad guitar player. I mean, yeah. the Lago's always had fucking super rad guitar players, but uh, just... Gus's writing style mostly just yeah. fits with it so well and me and him specifically like play really well together we both grew up as like thrash musicians and stuff which we don't incorporate much of that into Lago but it just helps us me and him like being on the same page with like how drum beats will go over riffs and stuff like that like we don't have to kind of tell each other what needs to be played over different types of parts we kind of already have that like clickiness so like Pretty much, I think, like you said, there's only been a couple of riffs that we've actually written and maybe one song that we've written that we haven't used. Everything we've written so far is something we'd be happy to listen to ourselves, you know, and is stuff ultimately, like, we've released, so I don't think we have any, like, back catalogs. Stuff. No, we, and we really never have um, any lineup of this band. It's I'm pretty, uh, I've always kind of been of the belief that, like, if I wouldn't buy that or listen to it, why the fuck would I write it? Yeah. Like it, um, it's, to me, it seems like it's a really simple thing, like, fucking just write music that you would listen to, yeah. but then it's honest that way, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, I think even stuff that we're into, like, I just, uh, the other day I saw Gus posted, like, a, some records he'd got in, uh, without knowing that I bought those same records, so I know we're all, like, on the same, um, wavelength as far as like what we're into and influences and stuff like that so yeah, um, but yeah this this lineup is by far been the, the one so okay hell yeah. yeah if anybody quits I'm fucking done <laughs> <laughs> I'm done <laughs> yeah and I was gonna say you being one of the newer members how have you how have you felt like how how was how was joining the band um no these guys are super cool like um so they needed just help uh on their tyranny tour for the last album mm -hmm. um they just needed somebody to go out um and play those shows with them so he hit me up because uh he hit me up before a couple of years before that about joining lago mm -hmm. uh, i wasn't able to at that time and they got brian their um, previous drummer fucking crazy good drummer and then a couple of years later they're doing the tyranny tour and they hit me up so um, he asked if I can learn the songs, and honestly, I learned. I listened to that Tyranny record. It was like probably fucking not. I messaged him back. I'm like, fuck yeah, I totally can. <laughs> and so I spent the next six months like getting that record down and stuff, and did that with them. Six months? You say it like you spent an actual six months. You probably <laughs> we probably okay. jammed like three or four times. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah like, on my own, I spent some a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> I spent six hard months learning their stuff. No, it wasn't so that difficult. long. Six months in, in my... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, procrastinating, so... <laughs> there was a six, six months before you hit me up. I was probably working on it for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, and, and then uh, I really liked the style that they were playing and you know, it was kind of different from what I was doing before. Uh, and once we got uh, Gus and they started writing for the new stuff, um, after I actually got hired on full time, mm. uh, it just, everything just clicked. I don't know. It was fucking sweet. But yeah, working with these guys is awesome. I like playing drums. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll play drums for these dudes to the fucking day I die, bro. <laughs> Dude, oh man, I'm, I'm out of a beer. Do we go get a beer? Oh, like, a totally beer make people think we're like Pantera. <laughs> hey man, we're out of beers. Are we the first band to beer pause? <laughs> <laughs> Stepping away for a second. So, what have you guys been listening to lately? Are there any gems that you guys have been listening that you think other people need to need to check out? Yeah. Convulsing. Um, it's a one man band. I was just listening to him on the way over. Um, his name's Brandon. He lives in Australia. 
uh, everything out of Australia right now seems like it's on this like fucking fire. Uh, but convulsing is awesome. They're uh, I think he's like really influenced by like ulcerate, but without sounding like he's ulcerate. Um, uh, super shred dude, and I think he. I mean, I don't know him very well other than just talking to him in conversation a little bit here and there, but uh, he's just he's like one of those tone guys. I think he's like a, he's like the Rain Man of gear or something. <laughs> like I, I pick his mind all the time. Like, dude, I'm, like I'm just pretty. I plug in and play. Like, I'm, dude, I'm <laughs> dumb as fuck when it comes to gear. Same. And, like, I'll, I'll blow him up, like, hey, man, I want to try doing this or this. And he, like, spits out, like, engineering science to me and shows me pictures of his pedal boards that look like something fucking NASA built or something. But um, it's convulsing. A uh, brand new album's called Grievous. Um, God, the fucking tone on it's killer. Like, he's so technical. Um, but not sounding like a tech death band either. Like um, the, the 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 tone is just so good. Like you like every note you can hear. Like I'm jealous every time I listen to it. I'm like, oh, I want I want that clarity in my tone. Um, the, the new burial invocation, super good. Um, Harvest Golgotha. Um, um, from I'm sorry, Gol- uh, Golgotha remains from. Uh, from uh, Australia as well. They're they're freaking great. Uh, Australia's coming. Harvest yeah. comes from here. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Fuck. If you look at my Bandcamp profile, I, I think I bought like fifty records this year. That's yeah, the point where yeah. every Friday my wife's like, "What are you spending fifty dollars?" Yeah. <laughs> every time I find she's, new she's music, right. I, like I get really excited when I find new bands because I don't go out searching for new bands that often as much as this guy does and. And when I find a new band, I don't even feel like I do. I just like it happens. So I think it's just like I, I sit at my desk, so like I listen to music all day. So I think maybe that's it. <laughs> I'll send this guy like a recommendation. I'm like, dude, check these guys out, and then he'll just send me a screenshot of his Bandcamp collection. <laughs> yeah, he's they... already bought. Out. <laughs> this happens so many times. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just stop trying to find new music. And just follow your Bandcamp collection. Dude, there's there's so many good. Uh, even just like the old school uh, death metal stuff, like Putrefication, super good. Extremities new records, fucking good. Um, great, yeah. Scorched is about to put out their first full length. I think it's their first full length. I think their last release was an EP. It's super good. Tomb Mold, um, A Feather and Bone, who we got to play with, and uh, Northwest Terror Fest. They're just fucking punishing. Um, it's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good music out there right now. Yeah, um, it's a good time for fucking. I feel like it's kind of, oh, yeah. 10 years ago, you didn't quite have to play shows as much anymore, yeah. because the, the, the MySpace was blowing up, but now, like, everybody has a fucking recording, like, there's so much good shit out there, you know, the bands that are super good, they're out, they're out playing, and they're really making a name for themselves, so. Actually, that leads me into another question, so, how do you, how do you feel today, um, Comparing, comparing how it was getting music out there, let's say five ten years ago, how does that compare to today? Where with the, the the rise of Facebook, with the rise of digital mediums to make it so much more accessible, um, how do you do? You think it's easier to get your to, to get noticed these days, or I think it's harder? Um, In a weird way, too. The music's definitely easier to upload. Yeah, the the getting the right ears to it seems to be a little bit harder, which is weird but it seems to be the case I think there's there's just so much of it and because it's easier to upload music onto the internet then it's really convoluted Mm -hmm. Um, so you have a lot of bands that are similar sounding which there probably always has been but now these bands have easier access to recording equipment which is a great thing they were easier access to release their music which is also a great thing as a music lover but i think it's harder to have the right people listen to your specific band because it is so watered down and there are so many different bands out there so it's a little bit harder um i don't know if it's too much different from five to ten years ago as it is from like maybe 15 to 20 years ago yeah but uh, there's there's probably definitely a difference. It's not as clicky as it used to be. So before, if you were in the yeah. right scene and you would release music to the right crowd, then you would kind of instantly have an in. 
Um, which now I think you really have to show that you're actually fucking good at what you do because you have to stick out to people because there's so many different things. I almost feel like it's kind of come full circle with that too. I mean, I'm a little older, I'm 36, so when I was first doing bands, there wasn't MySpace yet. I mean, the internet was there, but listening to music online wasn't really a thing quite yet. So bands you heard were the show. Like, it was a big deal. Like, a flyer for a show is a big deal. Like, now no one gives a shit. You got a Facebook event. But uh, yeah. um, then I feel like with when MySpace blew up, like, bands got huge without having do, done anything yet, really. Like, Job for a Cowboy, which it was deserved. They, you know, went on and uh, did their thing. But, like, I don't, I don't know. that They were playing shows, but before the MySpace thing, I don't think they were doing a whole lot. And that really, like like really elevated them um, and now it's like well everybody can do it so who's the best like I feel like all the, the bands that are legit good they're out touring yeah um, it's, it's, so it's kind of come back to that yeah everybody has a recording but oh shit now I need to actually go see these guys play mm-hmm. um, yeah there, there's there's a ton of good records I and mean, like a lot of the well nothing good is coming out like you're not fucking even listening to music if you say something. Like, if you say something like that, shut the fuck up. It's yeah. It's so, <laughs> it's so incorrect. It's, it's, it's incorrect. fucking it's ridiculous. Right. Everything sucks now. Like, if, again, I bought 50 records this year. Everything sucks now. <laughs> like, even if you only like music from the 80s, there's 10 bands from this decade that sound just like those bands from the 80s, but better. There's mm-hmm. music that you'll like that's come out recently. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm, so we'll say the hype train helps. Um, <laughs> like, I'm big into uh, like Dark Descent Records, uh, which I think everything that they put out is great. But like, you can hear similar bands that don't have kind of that that uh, the the label behind them. Oh, this is Dark Descent, so I have to buy this. So I'm, I'm kind of like that now. Oh, well, I I like everything they've done. So oh shit, I'm going to take the time and give a full listen to what they released as opposed to a band that might sound similar. You're like, you'll look at how many people own the record on, on Bandcamp between the two and like one's 900 and one's like 37. So um, being on those labels definitely helps. It gives you some credibility. Yeah. I, I think it does anyways. But Yeah, and I, I could not agree with you more. I mean, in regards to the... the if you're not if you're finding not able to find music you like you're just not looking hard enough because mm-hmm. I feel like at these days they're just let's say you didn't you liked Black Dahlia but you didn't like Trevor's vocals mm-hmm. like you can easily find five bands that yeah. sound like Dahlia without Trevor's vocals yeah. I remember when Black Dahlia came out it was kind of at that time where uh, I, like I think it was metalcore was kind of a thing and there you started seeing kids that weren't your typical like long haired like total like cult metal guys that were actually doing metal so for some reason before I had heard them like oh these fucking hardcore kids and this is like a hardcore band and like I heard it like sounds like fucking at the gates like why would you not like this like but um yeah like you're saying I don't think fucking and I think it's because I'm <clears throat> Black Dahlia Murder, I'm pretty sure they didn't get big off of the death metal scene. They got big off of yeah, the, they did. the metal core scene, but they it's weren't weird. that kind of band. So that's why I was saying if you get in with the right scene and the right people hear you, you know, you can, you were really able to get really far back then. Yeah. Now, now it's a little bit harder to fucking get it because the clicks are so sub genreized, you know? Well, I used they, to go, I remember back in the day I saw. Job for a Cowboy, uh, like Goodbye Tomorrow, and with this like electronic band called Peach Cake, like at some art venue in downtown Phoenix. So like before, it was like it was more of a scene where like it was all kinds of different music, and everyone just had silly hair. <laughs> now it's now it's everything subgenreized. So like you're gonna have to go to like a black and death metal show you're not going to be able to see a black and death metal band with a thrash band you know yeah like it's like they're all going to be black and death metal bands you know things like that people yeah. are so inconsistent with their shit talking about jfac too like they're what's your uh oh they're fucking like scene hipster douchebags what's your favorite joffrey cowboy release doom <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous oh everything they did was good like 
Yeah, the, the MySpace thing was a thing. Uh, the music wasn't bad, though. But for, <coughs> it, it stood, yeah. like, it, it fucking... The music worked. Like, it, it, it was backed by, by good tunes, whether you like them or not. Um, I think you can respect what they've done, but... Um, Abigail Williams, I think, had the the MySpace boom. There's okay, people, see. there's people that had the it's MySpace right. boom yeah. that fucking suck. Marshall Beck. <laughs> um, really bad. He fucking. If you remember MySpace at this point, like <laughs> I, when I, it was still a thing, Marshall. Um, he's talked about it. So fuck for me a, for bringing that piece of shit up. Too. For anyone confused as to what, but he uh, he, he, he had the fucking uh, he had the the hits. I think he might have had the little the software you could download with MySpace and like get a million listens. Well, fucking the the, the labels probably said, oh this guy down, he's got a million listens, and they listen to it and. Ooh. <laughs> hey, let's skip out on that, guys. <laughs> you want a real joke? Go listen to his fucking tryout video for The Haunted on YouTube. It's, it's Marshall Beck tryout video. Haunted. Marshall Beck. <laughs> no Haunted. All right. So, I'll put that in the I'll give him credit. He, uh,. He believes his own shit. <laughs> to, to his detriment. <laughs> so, I'm gonna... I'm gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> Probably better though. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, uh... So you guys have been getting a lot of well-deserved praise lately. Even Trevor of Black Dahlia was yeah. saying, <laughs> if there were a god, Logo would be the biggest death metal band in... Uh, biggest band of death metal right now. So... Thanks, How? Trevor. There is no God. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't help us out. Anymore. Thanks, Trevor. <laughs> How have you guys felt seeing people respond so positively to what you to the last album? It's been weird. Oh, yeah, I think mostly is because we listen to the album so much. Um, I don't want to fucking. And then it's really just like <laughs> I don't want to hear it again. So it's weird to hear that other people are really enjoying it, mm-hmm. which is totally cool. I still have fun playing the songs. Yeah, absolutely. We've met like picked this to death though. Like yeah. the fucking oh man, there's this part on this this ring out part. I was bitching about at practice the other day. I'm like, I fucking wish it was a little more beefier on it. Guitars on that ring, I was so thin and like. I brought it up to people to listen to it. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, I, there's points where I wish I could pull like a George Lucas and go back and like redo <laughs> things, but it's like, it's our it's once it's out there, it's not yours anymore. So, and it's people, right, but people are really liking it. So, it's people are. It's art, you heard him. It's, it, this is art. I know we've kind of transcended. Uh, Dad, you know, it's art, man. <laughs> I am who I am. Kind of transcended the whole like art thing, you know. And we're a little kind of on a higher dude, plane at this point. Dude, the transcendence, the transcendental fucking desert death metal. Yeah, I wrote a manifesto. Yeah. <laughs> so, for anybody checking you guys, let's say this is their they have not listened to you guys before. What is a good song to get into you guys? What would be your recommendation? For people to listen to as a good first song. Hmm. I mean, I guess kind of our hit right now is probably. This is the feel good hit of the summer. Good, the hit of the summer is probably "Soiled Is the Crown." Oh yes. Um, we did the video for that one. That's mm-hmm. one Matty Way directed it. Awesome. So that and that's probably the closest to a song that you're going to get. That's probably going to define where we're at and kind mm-hmm. of where we're headed. Um, before that, it was probably Tyranny, which is the title track of the last album. Hmm. Um, but now, I think Soiled is the Crown is probably the closer to what we sound like now. And what we're gonna yeah, it's got like all the kind of country the oh. elements. Yeah, absolutely. Um, at this point, it was the first song I got released, too, so it's the, the most accessible outside of just like listening to the album. Um, it's, it's got all the little nuances that me and Gus really wanted to do, um, just as far as stepping outside the box. Like, not getting so far outside the box that, like, you can't really control what you're doing anymore. It's still got its pretty, like, meat and potato, like, death metal parts. Like, that whole second half of the song, I feel like, minus that last riff, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, 
This kind of has a weird little, to me, like an immolation vibe. Maybe a little core guts. Um, well, I feel like more of an immolation, probably. Boring. Boring immolation. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely the boring immolation, so I'm not sure. But it's sick, yeah. Um, do you guys have, do each of you have a, a favorite song that's when it's on the set list, it's just like, hell yeah, glad we're playing this tonight? Uh, I think, well, my favorite song on the album, favorite song that we've ever done is Providence. Um, on the, so the, we, like I said, we're our own worst critics. Um, so, like, we played it uh, at the three shows we did on that little run up to uh, Seattle back. And, like, I feel like you got to pay attention to what the fuck's going on. Like, don't read the comments, but read them. Um, but nothing on the internet, but like just looking at people, like it's a it's a really good song. But I think it, it it's long. It has to be played when everyone's there to see you. Yeah. So I think it, it's it's for me. I love it. I love playing it. But it's, well, on like headlines. It's, it's like uh, it takes uh, it's, it takes a little bit to digest, I guess. Um, and I can see people at that point kind of. Starting to zone out. It's a longer song. I feel like you kind of, to put that on the end of the set, how we have, like, I feel like you, at the beginning, you're kind of taking your foot off the throttle. Um, so th- it doesn't work in a, a short little 25 minute set. Um, but I love playing it. That's my favorite song. But outside of that, Soiled's fun. It's just a big, it's big and fucking loud, and it kind of has a really, like, a, a groove lick to it. Um, I said groove like <laughs> you did say groove like uh, I'm gonna have to agree with Paul on yeah, the groove. Uh, dude's got that groove like you fucking hit it <laughs> when you're fucking right in the pocket <laughs> dude, like, it's, it's like right in the groove pocket <laughs> yeah. that's fine I still like playing uh, Tyranny uh, when mm-hmm. we do play it's just, it has its parts um, the middle section of uh, of uh, Broken Barrier which is just me ripping off uh, fucking gateways to annihilation, morbid angel. Like they, they should probably soon. <laughs> um, that fucking whole section, like it kind of sucks at practice because our PA is not that great, so you don't really hear Neil as much. But like when you're playing live, and it's just you hear the fucking kick going, just this gallop picking part over big double kick for like a minute. Um, that's a real like fun head banging type riff, um, but. I don't know. They all suck. Yeah. <laughs> Providence yeah. would be my favorite too. Providence. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think it's because it's, like it's such a long song. I feel very accomplished afterwards. It's not even a song. So. It's like a journey. <laughs> <laughs> it's experience. like it takes you like the lowest lows and the highest highs. In like the end, it's like <laughs> it's like life. It starts. Like you start running and then at the end it like slowly ends and you're dying. <laughs> and it's like this little fade out, little wussy riff, because you're dead. <laughs> Dude, that song wusses out so hard. <laughs> Dude, that song <laughs> wusses out. It gets uh, super sleepy. Yeah, it's beer break time. Yeah, beer break time. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> back after that beer break. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, brother. <laughs> so I don't think it would be a stretch to say that you guys will be on some of the European festivals in the future. I can honestly, I can see that. What, so for you guys, what would what would some dream festivals or some dream shows slash tours be if you guys could put together? If you could put together your own tour, or which festival would you love to play most? I feel like every metal. Bands like Dream Festival have to be Vakken. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess I never really think about maybe outside of Vakken. Like there, there's a bunch of stuff, but I mean, I just always think about like bands that would be cool to go out with. Um, That's like, more of my, my thing too. Like bigger, Vakken or like Hellfest in France would be super cool. Yeah. Um, more like but really, just a fucking go to Europe would be cool. Shit, we can go. We could go play at, like, the Joe's Grotto of fucking France or whatever, and I'd be fine with that. Like, um, and we, uh, fortunately, being being on Unique Leader um, and having a little bit bigger uh, fan base, I guess, now, like, we've, some of those doors have been open to where we could 
you know, pretend we could easily book something like that. We just have to, you know, get the logistics figured out. Okay. Um, we definitely want to go. I mean, we have people now, like, buying stuff in Europe. Like, hey, fucking come, come to Austria. Hell yeah. Fucking fly me to Austria. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it, bro. <laughs> Tell your friends about us so we can get out there. Come, come to Brazil. <laughs> I would love to. Fly my ass to Brazil. I'll play the <laughs> shit out of Brazil. But, um, yeah, there's these are all things we would love to do. Um, for, unfortunately, we're all in day job life. <laughs> we're, we're there, so we probably always will be. That definitely doesn't pay bills. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day when it does, I'll start bragging about it. I paid my phone bill. <laughs> Death metal. Yeah, there's some of those dudes who are like super good and they get away with like living off of like doing like uh like lessons in between tours and stuff yeah. like that. But like yeah. This sucks really like good, yeah. this this band like came to a point in my life where I was like older. Um with financial responsibilities. Like I own a house. I'm a dad, husband. So like even even now if like if it paid, I wouldn't want to leave for three months yeah. a year. Like I don't want to fucking so a month or two maybe. Um, but yeah, like if, if I was if I was twenty in this band, like good fucking mom, can I live on your couch for six months? Well, I would absolutely do it. Um, to some people, I guess that's chicken shit. But you know, where y'all hit, you hit certain points of your life where you can only do what you can do. Yeah. What you want to do, really. Like we've always, we've only ever done what we want to do in this band. So it's it's fucking not paying the bills. It's it's fun. Yeah. Like it's it's our it's a labor of love, I guess. Fuck, did I just say that too? <laughs> it's, a, it's a labor of love. <laughs> can we get a tally? Can you, can you put a tally like on this? Like a every time Cole says something dumb as fuck. <laughs> You know, I, I think I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> We're at least up to two. If I'm counting, I'm sure if you guys are counting, there's like fucking. It's really, it's really <laughs> transcended. <laughs> it's <laughs> transcended. It's just like the labor of love. <laughs> so, Cole, you have been uh, rather outspoken when it comes to the local scene. Oh, fuck the scene. <laughs> so, um, that leads into my question. What is your current opinion on the state of the local scene? Um. I think <laughs> it's too good. so. When I say that, it's like it's it's kind of misconstrued, I believe. Um, one, like fuck a lot of things, but two, uh, I feel like this big uh, oh the scene, man, the scene, the fucking scene, the scene. <laughs> fuck, fuck the scene. It, it fucking it doesn't hold bands accountable after a while, like. I'm, I think I said this to Gus the other day. Like, imagine, imagine, uh, let's just fucking take football. Like, I, I'm a Cardinals fan, right? I'm going to fucking go to the game. and Go Cardinals. Fuck yeah, Cardinals. Well, imagine if you did that, but you're going to the game and you're, fuck yeah, NFL. Go NFL. NFL. <laughs> well, if the Cardinals fucking suck, the members of the Cardinals are never going to, like, go, oh, well, we need to, like, fix our shitty team if... If everyone's just going, fuck yeah, NFL. And everyone's not doing that with the scene, but the scene's great. Like, there's fucking so many good bands here. But it's not about the fucking... The scene's not even a thing. Yeah. People come to shows. Yeah. And there's great bands. And, like, if nobody was coming to our shows, I would realize, oh, we fucking suck. We either need to change or this band's over with, like... Not not that we're great, but like there's like people keep you honest. Like, yeah. are they buying your shirts? Are they buying your merch? Are they coming to your shows? Like, if they're not, that's that's a fucking sign. And there's not not this fucking oh, but the scene's great. Like, fuck the scene. Like, like what what is the scene gonna do for you? Like, I, it's fucking rad as fuck to play with your friends on Saturday night. But you're only gonna be so big here. Like, go out, go drive six hours to Long Beach. Yeah. Fucking sell a couple records that people have never heard you. Like, it's fun. Yeah. One, it's a fucking road. Even if you're not able to tour, 
And a lot of bands here don't understand that, I don't think. Like, they're really big on, oh, we're fucking play Joe's Grotto on Friday night, and like Saturday night, we're gonna fucking hit the road to Tucson. Like, this dude, it's not hitting the road, you're just driving like down the street to Tucson, like, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Tucson's cool, we play there, but yeah. like, if you fucking wanna like do something, like, go to San Diego. Yeah. Fucking, even if the band sucks, just go to San Diego. Have some fun. Like, enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy your labor of love. <laughs> even if you're doing Pantera covers, it's Joe's Grotto. I mean, it's, I shouldn't be made to. The, the whole fuck the same thing. I shouldn't be made to feel bad for yeah. not going to shows of Absolutely. bands that I have no interest of listening to. Yeah. yeah so it shouldn't fucking... be up to the scene, you know? It shouldn't be up to people, oh, you gotta make sure you check out these bands, you know? It's really up to the bands, and it always has been. And, and for some reason, people are trying to get that to change. Like, oh, no, you should support all local music because local music is it. keeping this, this, this in life. And which is true in a sense. Um, but... I mean, it's really up to the bands, you know, you gotta play music that people like, like and if you don't want to play music that people like, that's fine, there's plenty of avant-garde bands out there that love doing what they're doing, but, you know, if you're gonna force it, well, why don't you like my avant-garde noise jazz, it's like, I mean, well, it kind of takes an acquired taste to listen to your avant-garde noise jazz, you know? <laughs> Look at so who's the biggest death metal band here? And one of the biggest death metal bands in the fucking world right now, Gate Creeper. Yeah. It's fucking Gate Creeper like fucking all over Facebook. Support the local scene, bro. <laughs> no. Yeah. They fucking do their thing and like kill everybody that's watching them because they're heavy and fucking loud. Like they do them. Yeah. And it works. And people love it and eat it up. They're selling records like crazy. They're fucking doing everything right now tour wise. It's it's fucking rad. Like, it's not about the scene. Mm-hmm. Play fucking music you like. And blindly Enjoy supporting it. bands is another thing that... that uh, it doesn't hold like, people accountable. Yeah. It, it kind of uh, dilutes the, the music scene as well, because then there's bands that are My being band, supported. I think you're great. I don't know. I need to play the last. Because we've been a band for fucking four years, and you've been a band for two years. Like, yeah, but you've sold five tickets. Yeah. This band sold fucking... Uh, yeah, it's not a seniority thing. But yeah, it's right. not it's not so much fuck the scene. Though it is fuck the scene. <laughs> yeah, it it sounds like fuck the scene. It's really fuck the scene. Yeah. Oh, well, no, it, and I, I get more joy out of it than people get mad. Yeah. They were fucking Cole's a dick. He yeah. doesn't support the scene. He doesn't support <laughs> the scene. Support like, the mother, scene. Motherfucker. I'll pull the old I'll pull the old man show. Apart, like <laughs> Dude, that was I was going to shows back when you was just sucking your mom's titty, boy. I'll do that. No, but fuck the scene. Play play music you like, and if people don't like it, you suck. Yeah. And you can still play sucky music, it's cool. Yeah. Or learn and get better. I definitely agree. I feel like... Fuck the scene. The whole, whole, uh, you gotta support the scene thing, it definitely takes a level of accountability away from the band. Even when somebody tells you, like, you gotta do something. Like, there's one rule in life. You don't have to yeah. fucking do anything. Yeah. I don't have to do a goddamn thing. I can just sit on my couch and drink fucking Modelo all night and play Formula 1 2018 <laughs> on Friday night instead of going to what the fuck ever show. Mm-hmm. If I don't want to go to it, obviously it has not called me. Yeah. I'm not compelled. <laughs> Is that stupid? <laughs> yeah, I, like that, I like that one. Fucking win, win my love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my love is not unconditional. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. I don't think you should be obligated to go to a, a a show just because the band is local. I feel like the moment that you are trying to make people obligated to, you're you're taking away any reason for the band to actually grow and yeah. get better. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I would never want to play a show with a bunch of with a bunch of people who are just obligated to be there because they're supporting the scene. Yeah. Sports yeah. scene. The, yeah. the most accomplishment I felt playing music is going from those stages of playing in front of four people and then slowly building that up and playing yeah. bigger shows as you actually get better yeah. as a musician. It just makes sense. It's a natural Cause progression. Because you're a fucking rule. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I told you, you motherfuckers. <laughs> told you motherfuckers I rule. That's why we all black too. Fucking heads right now. 
Yeah, dude. Look. Walk on home, boy. Oh, did you see a flip your stood that fucking bit up right about it now? Oh, 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 God, that's the best. So the dudes ham it up at local shows. Like, every so time we play know, here, friend, I know 95% of the people in the crowd. Like, how the fuck you fucking motherfuckers doing tonight, motherfuckers? What's up, <laughs> Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> How the fuck you doing in that club, Red? This is me. I live two blocks away. It's actually in my neighborhood. Coming out on a Tuesday night, Phoenix? Y'all are wild. <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, you guys, yes, you guys are fucking fun. Thank you so much for coming out. Like, And everybody's actually there for Gore got some tickets for. <laughs> oh, shit. Is yeah. It- like, I don't know. I feel like we, we, we've we all had that, that, that show or that period of time where we're playing for four people. Like, shit, sure, Lago it. probably will still do have yeah, those shows. Yeah. Fucking whatever. Do those four people want some? They're going to get some. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I feel like you, you, you should have to go through that. Like, I don't think that you should just announce that you're a band and then suddenly just like start playing like sold out shows right. like I feel like if you nice. get, yeah it would be great It'd but be if you great. give people that expectation you, you better fucking be somebody yeah, already dude. You're like nobody cares yeah. and plus the first time you got on the road like that is not gonna that's probably not gonna happen like even when the shows sucked on the road I thought they were fun like we what show uh, actually boys who's terrible but, it was awesome. but like <laughs> Seattle, I think it was fucking ten, ten people paid, but they fucking loved it, and ten oh, people yeah. bought merch, and like, well, one of the times we played Seattle, we played there a few times, but oh, oh, people just get too fucking wrapped up in like what things are supposed to be. Just shut the fuck up and go play show. <laughs> go play shows. Do you like the band of the year? Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of shows, so what opportunities do we have to catch you guys live in the near future? Or just Here? in the future? Well, just in general. When uh, you guys are we are going on tour um, in about <laughs> two and a half weeks now? Depends on when this, this video is being released. <laughs> yeah. uh, September 13th, we are leaving to uh, go to Austin, which is the first night of our tour with... Uh, Macabre and uh, Autumn. Autumn uh, put out a record on Unique Leader a week before us. So uh, we'll go hang out with the label mates for two weeks and uh, hopefully not die of like some liver toxicity. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting the idea just in our little shared group chat that they kind of have the same sense of humor, kind of the same ideas and thoughts that we do. So it might be a a really bad tour due to how much fun we're going to have. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we'll do that. And then uh, we aren't going to do shit for a while after that. I, I got to have sol- shoulder surgery like a week after we get back. So we'll be on the shelf at least till spring. Damn. Um, I punched him in his shoulder fuck. super hard. <laughs> yeah, this fucking, I saw this old lady. Like it's monsoon season and this old lady's cat was stuck in the tree. <laughs> I like, fucking rescued it. Shit. <laughs> yeah, so uh, hopefully uh, springtime we'll get a couple things going on here, and then maybe a West Coast run. It's just it's all kind of depends on what's going on with my bum shoulder. Okay, and then do you guys have any closing words? <clears throat> uh, support your local scene. Yeah, just keep the scene alive. Keep um, the- you know, people alive. people out there are really trying to work hard, like Marshall Beck. Um, <laughs> you know, there's different there's different <sighs> media outlets out there that the the one percent's trying to fucking bring down really hard right now. <laughs> Dude, fucking don't let the global elitists like keep you from going to fucking shows. Support your local scene. Yeah, support your local scene. The scene. Go to all of the Lago shows you can go to. <laughs> Which locally there are not booked right now. Right? It's not any shows booked. Oh yeah. Well, you guys playing any AZ dates on your tour? What's <laughs> <laughs> the point of a tour to play shows? Anymore. We've done that out of necessity because we couldn't get a day off for our last tour. But I mean, outside of that, like, do you fucking you guys fucking rolling through like faintly? We played here four times this year. Why don't you go to that show? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm such an irritated old man. <laughs> Closing words, like, don't irritate me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you see me, like, let's just talk about, like, let's drink some Modellos and support your local scene. Support the scene, keep the scene alive. Okay. Keep the scene alive, man. <laughs> All right, well, the, uh, my name's Andre. It's been a great interview with Cole and Neil from the band Lago. Once again, you can catch them, on, well, if you're not in Arizona, you can catch them on tour um, starting September 13th for the September Scum Tour. And also, do not forget to check out their album. It was released back in June, Sea of Dress. And also, just check that out in general. Awesome band. Make sure you support the local scene. Hell yeah, brother. Get your pool.